Hey, Catherine. Catherine! Do me a favor. Go to the garden and grab me some tomatoes. My Italian ma would shout across the kitchen with her strong New Jersey accent. An expert daydreamer, it would naturally take her hollering my name three or four times to get my attention, as I knew this would mean another trip to the garden. This garden, as I saw it through my young eyes, was just a box of chores. I couldn't see it through her eyes until now, and as an adult, I finally understand this magical place. I grew up in the beautiful Garden State, New Jersey. My mom from Brooklyn and my dad from Manhattan, they settled in Central Jersey, close to the shore, to start a life in a family. I don't want to disappoint, but it wasn't the debauchery that MTV made it out to be. <laughs> sure, there's plenty of examples of boardwalk mayhem, but this story begins in gorgeous Monmouth County. Jersey is a place where the seasons are clearly defined. Winters are freezing, and summers are always a scorcher. I remember snowstorms that lasted days, and summer nights in our backyard that was aglow with fireflies, or lightning bugs, whatever you call them. Spring always came in like a lion with a typical late season nor'easter, and fall painted the trees with ambers, oranges, yellows, and purples. These seasons contributed to some of the richest soil in the Northeast. Perfect for gardening. My mom would find the most joy in spring. In the backyard stood our garden, built from scratch by my dad, with that gentle guiding hand of hers. Chicken wire surrounded a frame made of two by fours to keep out the bunnies and deer that were so attracted to the zucchini and tomato flowers. At the entrance stood a swing door and latch to protect my ma's precious harvest. She would spend hours turning the soil, planting seeds, pulling weeds, and watering, then starting all over again. But she also knew how to delegate, and oh, how she delegated. The daily task given to my big sister and I, around the ages of eight and five, was dragging the hose across the lawn, watering the plants, and then dragging it back. The hose spigot was way off the back of the house, and the garden all the way on the far end of the yard. The hose was green, warm from the summer sun with the leftover water in it, and was as heavy as the expectation of completing the chore, with my ma's eyes glaring from the kitchen window, a task we loved and did so willingly. <laughs> as late spring arrived, the seedlings would sprout. Every day, she dedicated time after a hard day's work, paying careful attention to each and every plant. One side of the garden was completely dedicated to tomatoes. There were hothouse, romas, cherry and grapes, heirlooms, and Jersey tomatoes. Those world famous Jersey tomatoes. These beauties were the size of a softball and could be a meal on their own. As kids, we were taught it was completely appropriate to eat one just like an apple. The preparation was simple. Pick the best one by ritually laying them out on the counter make a smooth slice right down the middle, and top it with a little bit of olive oil and a sprinkle of salt and pepper to draw out the natural flavors of our garden. The soft but meaty texture was as succulent as a lobster and reminiscent of those good old Jersey days, you know, like hanging out with Uncle Paulie and Uncle Joe. <laughs> On the other side of the garden grew peppers, cucumbers, zucchinis, jalapenos, strawberries, and watermelons. We observed as each sunkissed plant grew taller by day spreading their leaves as their tiny flowers bloomed. This was a very proud moment, not only for my ma, but for all of us as we each played a part. It was a valuable lesson taught at a very young age that your contributions matter. We had months worth of fruit and vegetables and all the tomatoes imaginable for my dad's Sunday sauce. A ritual he would start early Sunday morning and leave the pot on low and slow all day long. My pops, and I <laughs> my pops and I always had an unspoken language of head nods, winks, smirks, and eye rolls. And that sarcasm came through thick without ever having to say a word. It was special, and I miss it. And I miss him terribly. After about six to eight hours, the aroma of a Sunday sauce would flow through the house and tickle my nose. Instinctively, I would uh, take a deep inhale 
and be instantly warmed from the inside out. As I picked out these distinct smells, I could begin to identify the essences of the sweet tomatoes, the savory meatballs and brajol, and that sharp parmigiano reggiano. Wherever I was in the house, daydreaming floating on my pasta cloud, <laughs> inhaling that nectar, I would hear something faint in the distance. And then it's louder and louder. And then I finally realize it's my Italian ma shouting at me for to come set the table for the third time. I'm instantly pulled back to reality and run to the kitchen as my mouth is now watering and my stomach growling. Sunday dinners were the best. My aunt, uncle, and two cousins, they lived right next door to us. They also had a garden. And next door to them lived my grandmother, who had an even bigger garden. This meant that for every Sunday dinner, we had nine gathered around the table. So there was no shortage of sarcasm, teasing, and breaking balls. <laughs> we rolled meatballs as a family, made brajol as a family, fought over which pasta to have for dinner as a family, and then finally, we broke bread together. The crop was so large that there was no way we can eat them all. Even by cooking them down, we couldn't keep up. So another one of the chores that I relished in was to deliver tomatoes around the neighborhood. The romance of sharing the harvest these days sounds amazing. But as a kid, you don't get it. The reality of knocking on your neighbor's doors, ringing their bell, and handing over a brown bag full of tomatoes is just so embarrassing. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Benedetto. These are from my mom again. <laughs> As summer would wind down, we picked the last of the fruits and veggies and prepared for winter. My mom would spend some fall days turning the soil, clipping the dead branches, and securing the garden. Snowy days would come again, only for different chores like shovel in the driveway, then my aunties, and then my grandmothers. Oh, how I longed for the days of pulling that hose across the lawn. And so the cycle continued. Spring, summer, tomatoes, Sunday sauce, and neighbor, years, neighbor visits for years to come. A kid could not have asked for a better way to grow up, and I have shelves of photos that I often flip through to remind me of it. It was in my early teens that I started to notice things weren't quite the same in the garden, and in the family. My ma spent a lot more time in the garden and found it to be an outlet for the growing tensions between her and my dad. The large gatherings at Sunday dinner became less common. As my aunt and uncle divorced and moved away, my grandmother was stricken with Alzheimer's. The tomatoes just weren't as sweet anymore, and there were no more arguments <laughs> over the type of pasta to be enjoyed. Our loud, boisterous dinners turned into quiet evenings, and the silence was deafening. As time went on, my parents also divorced, and I moved in with my dad. So picture it, a young 16-year-old and her dad. It was a match made on the Jersey Shore. We were like taffy and boardwalk, hair metal and Bon Jovi. And I mean it, he took me to my very first ever rock concert, Warrant and Poison at Madison Square Garden. <laughs> Life started to seem normal again. Our much smaller place had no garden, so instead of growing tomatoes, we would search for all the best fruits and vegetable stands. And there were loads of them. You just had to know where to go to find the best ones. And as my dad used to say, I got a guy. And he did. He had the best tomato guy ever. Our Sunday theme was always the more the merrier. So there was never a shortage of laughs, clinking of wine glasses, laughs and clinking of wine glasses. Even our old friend Sambuca, that glorious black licorice flavored aperitif, he'd make an appearance from time to time. My dad would always let me have a few sips, but I was sworn to secrecy a long time ago for what was talked about on those nights. And he would always lean in and whisper, don't tell your mother. As I was coming on 18, I remember getting ready for college and the realization sank in that I wouldn't have a kitchen capable of recreating our legendary Sunday dinners. And I was going to college in Vegas. What the hell kind of tomato was I gonna grow out there? <laughs> There's no soil, no seasons, no flower buds on our sun-kissed plants. The thought of jarred sauce made me cringe and I had no idea where the closest farm stand was. My dad gave me some final words of wisdom and sent me on my way. 
as if I walked through the steam cloud coming off the pasta pot and saw the light on the other side. Really, it was just the blinking lights of Vegas. So I arrive in Vegas and successfully make it through my first year without completely crapping out. My next move, a job in an Italian restaurant making sauce. I couldn't imagine being in a place where going without tomatoes or Sunday sauce was even a thing. I found one of the best off the strip family owned restaurants and I did everything I could to get a job there. This place is a hidden gem and even had some old timey mob movies film filmed there. And how did I find out about it? I got a guy. <laughs> <laughs> it took me seven times of going there to meet with the manager. She reminded me a lot of my ma. Strong willed, took no shit, made all the rules, and loved you to pieces. I was told, we don't hire women. You won't make it here. And even, pff, you want to work here? I showed up every day at 4 p.m. when family meal was being served. I waited until 4.30 when she would come down from the office and give station assignments. I once even got a, you again? After six times of being sent home and told not to come back, on the seventh day, she, fi <laughs> she finally gave me <laughs> an opportunity to be a busboy for a shift to prove myself. A busboy? I had to be a busboy to even be considered to work in the kitchen, but I was willing to do whatever it took because it had the best reputation ever. I passed her test that night and got the job. It took me a couple months to work my way into the kitchen, but I turned on that Jersey charm and got my way back there. I was taught some very valuable skills and trade secrets that I hold close to me to this day. Their sauce is absolutely delicious, even though it was never my recipe. I was with them for six years, and even now when I go to Vegas, I head straight to that restaurant to get a dose of their sauce. There's just something so familiar about it, and I have to have it. It was very natural that the visits to see my dad in New Jersey would center around cooking. We would plan our menu in advance, and he would do all the shopping ahead of time. We would start cooking immediately as I arrived. But there was this one time, something in the air was just different. I wasn't in the house more than five minutes, and he's tugging at my jacket and pulling me in the kitchen. He had already started the sauce, so I was welcome to the sight of my dad, wearing his favorite green and white striped apron, a huge smile, and that sweet aroma dancing in the air. As a kid, it was me who was eagerly awaiting his final taste test and that silent nod of approval. And now, in a reversal, he looks to me and trust me with that final taste. What an honor that has been bestowed upon me. I grow taller with pride as I walk to the stove. Frank Sinatra is blaring through the house, <laughs> providing my dad's life soundtrack of I did it my way. <laughs> I can see him smirking out of the corner of my eye as the suspense was building, speaking that unspoken language of ours. Carefully, Lifting the lid as the steam wafted from the pot, I would slowly bring it to my nose. I inhale deeply. Time stood still. Scenes from my childhood flashed in my head. Everything I knew about family and being together and the art of appreciation was all in that one pot. Everything I was ever taught about values struggles, and how your part in life makes a difference was all in that pot. Every family legacy that I would carry on for years to come, it was all there. And I finally figured it out. I was experiencing pure joy. And it was all from those tomatoes. Pat Pucci wrote Kat Cucciarone, ladies and gentlemen. Kat.